Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. This is Greg, and today we're going to restore a gooseberry cutter. I've also heard it called a gooseball roller and a slide cutter. This candy was made specially for our loot box for our 30th anniversary. It sold out, but I thought you'd like to see how we restored the machine and the candy that it made. And if you missed the loot box, don't worry. This one's gone, but there'll be many more. So go to our website, www.pd.net, and sign up for our email list so you'll know when the next loot box is shipped. One of the goals of candy is to make perfectly round drops of candy. And the drop rollers that we do to make sort of round bits of candy, but they end up flattening and they're not perfect. So they've come up with lots of different solutions for this. One was called the Jackson Ball Rock Roller. We actually tracked one of those down a year or so ago, and I'm hoping to get that fixed up. This, this is a slide roller or a plum roller. It has a lot of different names. There were several designs of this in metal and wood, but by all accounts, the wood worked better. Just take this off. You see each one of these tracks with teeth in it with the curves? Oh, this is a beautiful shape. And then, so you know, how we uh, make candy by pulling out rods. Well, you take the rods of candy and you lay it this way across this, and you put it between this top and the bottom piece here. You can get it open here. Line these two sides up. Put this side over the other side. I'm actually not sure which side's top. When you slide them, and as you slide them, it makes the candy round, and then you lift it up and you dump it out. I think this is meant to be held like this and rolled, but I can't wait to play with that also. This is cool. This is in really good shape. The old wood ones, when they do survive, are usually in terrible shape. Look at this thing. This thing is beautiful. This is going to be easy to clean and easy to use to make candy. I don't know if we ever will. It's not the most efficient way to do it. But this looks fun. And I bet you this is something I could build one of. Because those blades look like repurposed bandsaw blades. Pretty standard stuff. I love it. We have a warehouse where we restore this equipment. And it doesn't just have a full machine shop, it also has a full cabinet shop. Fortunately, this project isn't going to need this. It's just going to be a bit of sanding and then applying the right type of oil. The first thing I realized is how dry the wood is. It probably hasn't been used for 80 or 90 years, or at least not oiled in that time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the top layer of wood off, and then we're going to condition it with a food grade oil, a cutting board oil. This is a food safe mineral oil. It's non-allergenic and it also won't spoil at any point. It will make the wood smoother and less sticky and it will prevent cracking the wood. I'm really surprised this wood hasn't really cracked anyway. It's that dry. A normal woodworking project like this would take about a quarter cup of this oil. The wood absorbed over a cup, probably closer to a cup and a half of oil. So this was old, not used, dried, and we're very lucky it's still together. Watching the video after the fact, it didn't seem like we did much, but it made a world of difference with this wood. The wood doesn't want to stick to the candy when we put it in, and it's probably going to be preserved for years to come. We'll have to re-oil it two or three times a year, but it'll be worth it to keep this thing going. I thought I would make this candy look melon-like if I made a transparent green with light green stripes. And of course it's melon flavored. It's poured on the table at 310 degrees, and then all we have to do is even out the temperature. 
make it into rods, and then cut the rods into balls with this cool wooden machine. The sugar is already flavored and colored when it's poured on the table, and we're going to make two colors by pulling some of it. Hey, how you doing this morning? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. It looks like that old movie, The Blob. Yeah, I'm making melon candy. Melon candy. Yeah, within this wooden machine over here that hasn't been used for like a hundred years. No. What? Is that already? No, it's first batch we've ever made. I'm going to test with this one. That's too long. A little too long. Some of them. Yeah, and a bunch of them. I need the scissors. Yeah, too long is definitely much worse than too short. Okay, so with the next one, if you could please leave the last one. That's what's perfect. So I have that one.
think if I put too many in, I don't have enough strength to press them down. And I think a little thinner is actually better than a little thicker. They're too thick, they can't cut. They're too thin, they become a little oblong in shape. But I don't see that as an issue. It looks like I can put as many on as I want and just wiggle it until they're done. It's really hard to roll until they become balls and they're on ball bearings. my candy. It came just in time to see the end of it. This is a candy press from about 1870. They came out better than I hoped. And what's more, they were easier to make than the triangle stick candy. If you want to try our candies for yourself, please go to www.pd.net. Follow us on Instagram or Twitter, and if you're ever in Tallahassee, we're right off I-10 at the Thomasville Road exit. Thanks to our Patreons who support our videos and who got first dibs on our loot box. Our loot box sold out to our Patreons on our email list, so get on our email list at www.pd.net. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and check out our other videos here on YouTube.